This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Got an emergency service call on a walk-in freezer not working. They said the fans weren't working, everything's down, everything's thawed out. And I get here and it's running, but one of the fan motors is bad is what it looks like. Um, but the box temp's like 11 degrees. And I tried to talk to them like, are you sure it's down? Are you sure it's not in defrost? And they're like, no, it's been down all day. Yeah, it hasn't been down all day. But regardless, we're gonna get a fix for them. So we'll uh, jump up here see what's going on with that fan motor. Maybe it's ice, maybe it's a bad fan motor, and uh, go through the, all the equipment. Just walking into the box, judging all the frost that you see right there, and look right here, they've been propping the door open. All that frost is gonna be from the door, and whatever that calm cable is, I don't know what the heck that is, but it's completely destroyed. Some sort of a calm line, it's not going to anything. That's weird. So it's not, frozen up there's a little bit of frost back there but that's not too bad um it's it's a little thawed looks like they took all their ice cream out of here but uh i don't see any ice blocking the motor i'll get this pulled off and we'll have a look at it all right so it is uh i don't know about six o'clock at night so it's dark but that's okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here have a look at the defrost clock we're gonna start with that i suspect it just came out of a defrost. Walk-in freezer, I'm looking right now, is system B. And, yeah, you know, that's interesting. It didn't just come out of a defrost. It's about to go into a defrost. That's odd. I wonder if they were up here playing with it. Interesting, interesting. Well, regardless, we're going to go through everything. So let's step over here and have a look at the compressor. So, this should be my walk-in freezer compressor, I believe, yeah. So if we come right here, this is my walk-in freezer compressor. It's running with a clear sight glass, cold suction line, hot discharge line, okay. I mean, nothing too crazy. It's not iced up, it's got frost coming back. It's a good sign. Let's have a look at the condenser fan motors. They're both running. This guy does have a head pressure control valve. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any major problems here. The compressor itself doesn't seem too hot, like it's been overheating. Doesn't seem like that. Huh, interesting. Looks like maybe this walk-in cooler's got something going on. But that's a problem for another day because it's temping. But I'm intrigued as to why potentially the fan motors could have been off. I mean, it doesn't seem like it was just in a defrost. Huh. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Maybe they had the power switch shut off, you know? You never know with these guys. I went ahead and shut off the breaker and we're going to go downstairs, the contactor pulled out. We're going to go downstairs and have a look at that evaporator fan motor and see what's going on with that. Um, now I'm going to do my best to get this equipment running and make sure everything's good. I suspect that they just left the dang door open. Um, I don't know, you know, what's going on, but who knows. But. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time here tonight. If I can get it running and it's coming down to temp, then I'll leave them be and I'll likely come back in the morning when I'm not on overtime um, just because I don't want to be here any later than I have to. But again, we have to get it operational. So let's run downstairs now. All right. A couple things. Number one, when I was getting up here, I noticed this drain pan's got a big giant crack and it looks like someone's been yanking on it or something. We'll have to get them a new drain pan, but the fan motors clearly um, powers off, but I can tell that it's it's the bearings aren't spinning smoothly, so we'll get this pulled out. There's also some weird wiring going on back there, so let's try to make it a little bit nicer. This is kind of a pet peeve of mine, but you never want to zip tie these wires like this. First off, that's like melted, but same over here. I don't know what cork tape was invented by the devil and it shouldn't be used on anything. There's only a few instances. Um, when you're wrapping the, the, the QRC or the intelligence sensors, cork tape is good, but 
in this case, that stuff is made by the devil. Um, but yeah, these wires shouldn't be bundled up right here because they just lead to an electrical short. Um, so let me get this all cleaned up. Who knows? There may even be a short and then I don't know why that wire melted. Maybe it was loose or something. This evaporator coil is a dumpster fire. So it looks like that has been rubbing. That's not a big deal, but that melted. But I just cut out the wire nuts. But this whole thing is just a mess. Looks like the, the harness went bad a long time ago over there that's where it plugs in right back here that's missing the wires are just wire nutted everywhere um i'm gonna fix this but i'm not gonna fix it tonight i'm gonna get this motor in and get the coil running get it down to temp and i'll probably come back tomorrow and redo all this electrical and clean it up to where it's accessible and um you know that we were able to work on the equipment because it's just a mess it's just a problem waiting to happen for sure all right, when I'm doing this, if I am gonna use an aftermarket motor, this is a D1126 is usually what I use because it still has the plug on it. And in my situation, uh, we're gonna to have to cut the plug off, but it's always nice to have it so that way you can swap it out. This motor, by the way, is, yeah, I can't even turn it by hand versus this one I can spin very easily. This one doesn't wanna move at all. Um, and it's red hot, so it's just locked up. You can see there's a bunch of cardboard dust behind it. Um, so I'm gonna get it all put in there. Go ahead and get this plug cut off. We'll splice it temporarily tonight, and like I said, we'll come back and clean everything up the right way. All right, if you are gonna zip tie to the bracket, do a double zip tie where you zip tie a zip tie to itself, that way the wires never touch the metal or come in contact. This is just temporary to get me through the night, um, and we'll uh, get this running, and then we'll come in and we'll have to rewire this, because. They've got lamp cord going in here. I've known about this lamp cord for a long time, but we'll clean it up and make it right. Get rid of this silliness and do it right and proper. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get it together, get the fan blades back in. That way I can get it running for the night and then I'll come back. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn this guy back on. Um, and it's running. Uh, we need to go downstairs, make sure the evaporator fan motors are running. But I'm actually gonna switch the defrost around because I don't really wanna change that. Well, you know what? I'll deal with that in the morning. I'll set the clock in the morning. Well, no. No, I don't wanna do that. So, I'm gonna set the clock for the right time because it's 729. That way when I come back in the morning, if this thing doesn't have the right time on it, we'll know it's bad. So we're gonna set it for seven. 7.30, there you go. And I'll put four defrosts in there and then we'll run downstairs and uh, check it. I just wanna make sure it doesn't go into a defrost right now. All right, it is back and running. Uh, the temperature controller says 26 degrees now because it warmed up a bit. So I'm gonna shut the door, watch it come down a couple degrees and if all is well, we'll come back tomorrow. So I came back today. Looks like it's about negative seven, negative six on the temp control, which is good but uh, they just got a huge delivery and I can't even breathe in here. Like, I had to play Jenga just to get over here. It's a giant mess. So, I think I'm gonna have to come back. It's obviously working, so that's a plus. All right, I am back. Sounds like something's hitting in this guy. But our temp, it's good, negative eight. We're gonna fix this electrical issues in here. They just got another delivery this morning, but Luckily I can get in here, so. And I'll see if I can't stop that vibration. What the heck is that about? Coming up to the rack again. And. Still running a clear sight glass, no issues with that. I don't see the need to investigate refrigeration problems. I think everything's fine on that aspect. So let's get the power turned off and get that electrical fixed up coming in here to shut off the breaker and when I left I set the time on the time clock and it still has the right time it's been about two or three days since I was here last so that's a good sign timers good to go so what I'm doing here is I'm replacing a bunch of the wire but I'm putting strain relief connectors these guys right here and we're gonna run a single cord over for this fan motor a single cord for this well that's the plan a single cord for this fan motor and we're securing them hopefully in a way that they're not gonna touch the metal brackets or anything. That's the plan. So it's slowly getting better. So that's the cord for this side. 
Now notice I did zip tie it to the bracket, but what I zip tied was the motor wires. You can still pull the other wires, so you can still pull the whole bracket out. And I did the same thing on this one. So you just unclip the power wires and the wires stay with the motor if you were to pull it out. That way it makes it easier for servicing when you come to defrost the coil. Um, I mentioned the previous day that I hate cork tape. The reason why I hate it is because it's almost impossible to get off once it gets frozen. It's a nightmare. It's a pain in the butt. Um, so we're gonna land the terminals. You're gonna be individual wires going to F1 and F2. So I'm gonna pull the old stuff. Here they are right here. We'll pull these guys out land them on there and then the motors will be wired and then I can look at what I got to do to fix the solenoid valve wiring. I've got both of the motors wired into F1 and F2. They each have their own designations. The wires are zip tied and secured. Same thing over here. Now it's time to look into this solenoid valve wiring right here and try to clean this up so that way it's not touching the heater. If we come over here to the schematic, right here is your evaporative fan motors. You can see they're wired into F1 and F2. Now before they just ran a single connection and then it spliced for each motor, but I have a dedicated run for each motor now. Now this does say with heater contactor, mine doesn't have that, but it's still the same configuration all the way across F1, F2, so. All right, we got the solenoid valve wiring ran nice and tight with the strain relief connectors. That way it's not gonna rub out on the heater. It looks like I got some plastic and stuff to get out of there. But this is what I wanna show you guys. Look at this, look at, this had been rubbing against the heater because there was way too much slack in here and you could see it melted on the plastic, the wrapper or label or whatever. So that's what we're trying to fix. We're trying to eliminate the potential of electrical shorts. All right, we are back on and running and I tweaked this blade and uh, eliminated a vibration in it. And then this guy right here, set for negative 10. It was negative six when I got here. Let's give it a second. This one seems to be spinning slow, but it has voltage. I have to follow up on that. Maybe it's just frosty. They had just gotten a delivery this morning and um, the coil's a little frosted up. So we're gonna throw it into a defrost. That's probably why it feels like it's not getting good airflow because it was pretty thick on the back. So I just threw it in defrost, we'll let it run while I'm cleaning up my messes, and then we'll take it out and make sure the fan motor's spinning at, or spinning at full speed. All right, we are back. We are moving the proper amount of air. The coil's defrosted. It's gonna take a little while to come down to temp. It's currently reading 31, but it was negative six when I got here, so I think we're good to go. Uh, we'll tell the customer to keep an eye on it, and all is well. I don't necessarily always have to put my gauges on a refrigeration system every time I work on it. As you start to work with them more and more, you're going to learn uh, the signs and things that indicate that there's a refrigeration problem. In this instance, and I didn't really explain it in the video, but what I actually figured out was the initial service call, they had a kitchen manager that was there and he was there opening till about 2 p.m. And at 2 p.m., he relayed to another manager that the evaporator fan motors were not working in the walk-in freezer. The other manager did not go in there at all. So they placed an emergency service call at about 5.30, 6 p.m., somewhere in there, and they said, our walk-in freezer's been down all day, none of the fans are working, the temperatures are high, we need you now. So I called the restaurant and I said, hey, so what's the deal? Is it bo both fans are down? And they're like, yeah, both fans. And I go, is it in defrost? And the person that was on the phone with me was like, well, if it is in defrost, it shouldn't be that high in temp. And I go, well, what's the temp? And she goes, well, I don't know, but it, we need you here now. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll head out there. But when I had originally talked to her, she said, yeah, we've been watching it all day. And I go, again, I, I just told the manager like, hey, I'm here to fix your problems and I'm coming out either way. But just to FYI, if you guys noticed this earlier in the day, we're now on overtime. You could have saved a lot of overtime had you called during the day. But I said, regardless, I'm going to come out and I'll get you guys taken care of. So the reason why I did that was I'm trying to educate the manager, right? And just let them know like, hey, I, I'm here to fix your problems and I'm going to come out. But, you know, if you notice this during the day, like, hey, you know, you can probably figure this out. And I actually escalated it to the general manager and the executive kitchen manager uh, at this particular restaurant too, um, just to let them know like, hey, this could have been a non-overtime call had your management team caught it earlier and made the phone calls and not pushed it all the way to 6 p.m. But I wasn't upset. I wasn't angry. I reiterated to the, the kitchen manager and the general manager like, hey, 
I'm here to fix your problems. I'll come out whenever you want. I just want you to know you guys could have saved some money. And they were appreciative of that. So I always try to educate them as much as possible. And I try to get to the bottom of things. Because in the beginning of the video, you can kind of see I was confused. Like they said it was all the fans weren't working. And I didn't understand why when I was there at like 6 o'clock, I would have assumed that it just came out of defrost. And it was after that that I realized it hadn't been in defrost since like 2 p.m. That like, hey, wait. Who said this and when did they leave? And then that's when I got to the bottom of it. So I always try to understand things. It's like a mystery. You know, you're trying to figure out, okay, who called? What time were they here? What did they see? Can I talk to them on the phone? You know, just trying to understand things. So what I think happened was I think, and I never got the full gist from the actual manager that was that, that told the other manager to call me, right? Because it's a lot of hearsay. But I think what happened was they saw one fan motor not working earlier in the day. Uh, and then the unit went into defrost and both the fan motors turned off. And then that manager probably got a little scared, uh, and had them place a service call. Now, regardless, yes, they did have a fan motor down and the box temp was like 11 degrees. So yeah, technically it was a little high in temp. Honestly, I think it would have recovered. I really don't think that it needed to be an overtime call, but regardless, I'm there. If the customer wants it, I'll come out there, right? We'll get it done. So I went out there found that we had a bad evaporator fan motor and saw a bunch of messed up wiring. So I got it going for the night, tried to come back out the next day. The box was full of food. So then I said, okay, I couldn't come out the following day. So I came out the next day and it was full of food again. Like they had just got another delivery. I was like, oh my gosh, good grief. So I went and did something else, came back a couple hours later. They had everything put away. And that's when I was able to finish and go through the system, okay? I talked about cork tape in the video. I really don't like cork tape. It's an insulation like tar type tape. Do not like it because it's just horrible. If it gets really, really hot, it makes a giant mess. If it gets really cold, it's really difficult to take off. Just not a huge fan of it, okay? Uh, also, I repaired a bunch of electrical wires in there because I didn't like the way that they were going. Now, in a perfect world, I get a new wiring harness from Heatcraft, put it in there, put the OEM motors back in and call it a day. Um, but I didn't want to have to order the wiring harness. None of my supply houses have them. And putting the wiring harness back in there would have required that I needed new evaporator fan motors too because we need the plug-in connections and everything. And it just, I didn't see the need for all of that. So I just used SJ cord did it, secured it properly. It's not going to rub out. No more issues with that. And the customer was happy. So, you know, I'm always preaching about looking at the big picture, but understand that there's limitations to that, right? First and foremost, you need to reach out to your management team, make sure that they want you digging in further than they're asking you to do so, right? But sometimes you have to know like, hey, there's a time and place for the big picture. In this situation, nothing was warranting me to put my service gauges on the system and evaluate the refrigeration system. It was working fine. I left it at that. I fixed the problem at hand, which was a bad evaporator fan motor. But again, while I was in there, I noticed there was some electrical issues, so we did correct that. Made some recommendations to the customer. I highly suggest that they let me go ahead and replace that drain pan. I have not gotten an approval for that. And in all honesty, I don't think they're going to do it anytime soon because they're kind of on a spending freeze as we're at the end of the year. It's currently uh, December 27th of 2022. Um, they're, they're, you know, not wanting to spend money to make their quarter, you know, finish nice and stuff. And in all honesty, I don't think they're going to spend a lot of money in the month of January either. They usually do this. A lot of restaurants do where they drag on through January just to make the beginning of the, the first quarter look really good. So it's just a money game that they play, but they are operational. I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much. Um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, leave me some feedback, any interaction you can give to myself or any other social media creators. It really does help. So whether it just simply be a thumbs up, thumbs down, some sort of a comment, subscription, follow all that different stuff, it really does help. There's a few ways that y'all can help support the channel if you're interested in doing so. You can uh, simply just watch the videos. That's the easiest way. Just watch the videos. Um, you can also support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. Those are all ways to support the channel on a monthly level. 
Um, you can also, if you're interested in doing so, purchasing tools, you can go to truetechtools.com. They're an online retailer. I purchase a lot of my own products from True Tech Tools, but I actually set up an affiliate program link with them. So if you use my affiliate code, big picture, one word, you get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website at checkout, and I get a small commission from that. So that's a great way to help support the channel. Um, there's a bunch of different other ways. Actually, there's one more, I'm sorry, not a bunch of other ways, but there's another way. If you go to my website, hvacrvideos.com, we have some merchandise available, some hats, um, some beanies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, all that good stuff. Again, it's just all a great way to help support the channel. So thank you so very much. I really do appreciate you. Happy new year. And, uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.